gentlemen and welcome back to something a little bit different but fairly well known among the gaming community this is ftl faster than light by subset games the same creator as into the breach as you can see down here in the bottom left this is the game that we played and tried out not too long ago and really really enjoyed now ftl is a game that you know was released back in 2012 and there was an advanced edition that added a lot more features and content to the game back in 2014 and yeah, I've been aware of it for a while, but I haven't really given it the time of day or really given it some thought. And about a year and a half ago, I got it for free from Epic Game Store right alongside Into the Breach and added it to my library and didn't think anything more of it until completing Into the Breach. I said, you know, I should probably try this game out, give it a chance to see if I really like it. And, you know, bottom line up front, get this game if you haven't already. If you get the opportunity to pick it up, try it out because I was very pleasantly surprised at this game. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. So the synopsis from Wikipedia of all places states, the player controls a spacecraft capable of traveling faster than light, hence FTL. It belongs to the Galactic Federation, which is on the verge of defeat in a war with an exclusively human and xenophobic rebel faction simply called the Rebellion. The player's crew intercepts a data packet from the Rebel fleet containing information that could throw the Rebels into disarray and ensure a Federation victory. The goal is to reach Federation headquarters, waiting several space sectors away, and they're not kidding when they say that, while avoiding destruction from hostile ships or by the pursuing Rebel fleet. The final sector ends with a battle against the Rebel flagship, a multi-stage fight which results in victory or defeat for the Federation. Now, this is an awesome, awesome game. Uh, Steam rating-wise, it's got 10 out of 10. Uh, it, it's, this is a highly rated game, and there's a lot of good reason for that because it deserves it. This has won all sorts of awards. It's highly deserved. You know, for me personally, I'm not usually a fan of these style of games, but I figured I'd give it a try. You know, the type of games that I'm not necessarily a huge fan of are top-down, roguelike, possible real-time games, mostly of which are, you know, RPGs and fantasy-style games. However, this game is enjoyable, replayable, and addictive. There are so many unlockable ships, missions, ways to improve. Every time you take a step forward and try to play through a run in this game, you learn something new. You uncover something interesting that makes you ask the question, if I were to start over, I could try that out. I could try this tactic. I could improve on this. I can improve on that. And there's going to be a lot of starting over. Not every run is going to be successful. I have gotten to the final boss on the easy settings a number of times, and every time I have gotten further and further and further, and I've learned more and more. Now, it's really, really a lot of fun, but before we do anything else, I am your host with the most, The Chronic Toast. And let's start a new game and see what this looks like. We're going to take a look at how this works in general, kind of get everyone up to speed. There's a lot of intro videos that are out there on the web, but I figured, you know what? We're potentially going to be doing a pretty good series on this, trying out different things when the days, weeks, months as it comes on by. And, you know, let's have a good solid foundation and a good starting point. So we're going to come over here to the new game. We're going to click on this. We're going to ignore this. I already have a previous game going on. And we're just going to dive into something new. Now, this is what's really cool. Once you dive into this right off the bat, you're, you know, showing a lot of stuff that's potentially a little confusing to newer players. And FYI, we're leaving off the advanced edition content for now. I have yet actually to dive into that. I want to get to grips with the core game before we get extra weapons and aliens and ship designs and things like that, which I've heard are awesome. So for the most part, we're diving on to easy, which gives you increased scrap rewards and easier enemy generation. Or you could go straight to hard, low scrap, harder enemies. Your score gets a 50% boost. So there's that. And for me, it's the narrative trying to figure stuff out. And I've yet to beat the game in its entirety so easy is a good place to start. So you select your ship, you confirm your settings, and you dive on it. It's that simple. But before we do that, let's take a look at what we have here. This is going to be your interior ship layout. You've got your, your pilot's area up here, shields, uh, med bay for healing. This controls the doors remotely. This is your uh, internal review area for security cameras. So you can see everything you have here. You've got your weapons officer area. You've got your engine and, of course, your O2 generation. Now, this is just one ship. We have gone through and have been played through a number of times 
you could select different ships. For example, this is the Taurus. This is an Engi vessel. Go over here. This is a Zoltan vessel, the Agitator. This is the Nassau. This is a stealth-style ship, which can temporarily cloak so that the enemy can't shoot at you. Now, every single versions of these ships have larger and more variable uh, loadouts. You can see down here, you can complete two of any of these missions to complete and get access to loadout B. And then it goes on to loadout C. For the Engi, for example, I've got one completed here. Have four enemy systems or subsystems ion at the same time while using the cruiser. What does that mean? Well, ion is a type of weapon system. You can see down here for the weapons, you can see what you have access to. Ion blaster, it takes a certain amount of power. There's a charge time. There's, it tells you how many shots are fired. It also goes in and tells you if it gives you an ability to bypass enemy shields and it temporarily stops or pauses the usage of a weapon system, whatever you're shooting at. And we'll take a look at that as well. Down here, you can also see what your augmentations are on this ship. For here, you don't need everyone to go to the med bay. It has the NG medbot dispersal, which means every single individual can get healed regardless of wherever they are at a slightly reduced rate. And you can see as well, you can come down here to the crew. You've got a human, you've got two NG. Basically think, you know, the Geth from Mass Effect or friendly Terminators that aren't quite as bent on destroying humanity versus, you know, Emily, who's here as another individual. Taking a look over here at the Zoltan vessel, these are Zoltan. You know, you can see up here on the top right that they uh, provide power. They don't necessarily have to have as powerful ship systems because they themselves generate energy, though their max health points are reduced, you know, and they have an area of effect when they die. And there's a lot of information like this, and I highly encourage you to take a look at the starting ship, which is all human right now, to take a look at what the, you know, the shields, the engines, what all of these values are, just briefly so you can get familiarized with them because we're going to dive on in here in just a quick moment to see what this is like. And so due to that, the easiest way is to dive on in. Click on that start button. Here we go. Now here's our generic entry. It tells you kind of the, the history of what you're doing, why it's, your mission is important to get through here. And it also tells you, hey, nebulas, which is a type of region of space you can travel through, they slow down the pursuing ships, but they also contain significant dangers, high risk, high reward. We're gonna hit that continue button and we're gonna familiarize ourselves here with a few of the systems before we start and jump on off. So here on this ship, for example, you have the engine bay, oxygen, you know, all these things that we went through, all these individuals, they can move to different regions of this ship. Now notice as they've left the pilot's area, we're no longer able to jump because we, we need two people. We need a pilot and we need an engine area over here. Now, what's cool is, you know, if you're not necessarily happy with the location of people, you can move them around. You can take a look at every single one of these individuals. And right now, they are not specialized at all. But the more time every individual spends in an area working and servicing and repairing different mechanisms and using them, whether it be shields or piloting or weapon systems, they get better at that. And eventually, you'll get bonuses added to those systems by that specific crew member spending time there doing different things. Now, additionally, you can take a look up here. You can see that this is the amount of fuel every single time we jump, this consumes one of these FTL fuels. Up here are missiles. We have some weapon systems, specifically down here, the Artemis rocket launcher, the missile type that ignores shields. Every time it fires, it uses a missile. So this is a very powerful weapon, but it is a limited resource that you're going to have to scavenge or buy at stores, which is another region of space that you can stumble across or find. And lastly, you have drone parts over here. We don't have a drone set up on this ship, but you can eventually buy one. It'll pop up in one of these empty bays, and it basically sends a uh, flying R2-D2 style drone of sorts to either harass the enemy, to defend your own ship, to board the enemy, or to defend your own stuff, to run around and repair different things. It's very, very Star Wars-esque, and it's really, really, really cool. Now, all these different ship systems are purchasable. You know, we're talking about uh, drones and stuff at different stores. And if you get and pick up stuff and salvage items that you don't like or you don't want, you can sell those for scrap. Scrap up here is the total currency. This is what you use to buy things in stores, or this is what you get when you sell things in stores. Now, again, we have three human crew members here, and there are a number of crew that you can eventually acquire either through hiring at different stores or through different missions and events that you run across, you know, uh, derelict ships with a survivor you can bring them on board so on and so forth but of course you've got humans which are kind of generic and uninteresting you've got zoltan which are the green glowing individuals they end up in giving you additional power which we'll talk about down here in a quick moment and you just also have the mantis which look like giant bug people they are very very brutal in combat they can move very quickly but they repair things very slowly you have the rock individuals 
and they're very, very brutish. Think of uh, The Thing from the Fantastic Four. Very, very powerful. Immune to fire, all that stuff. They're pretty good. And then, of course, you have the Engi, which we looked about previously, which are, you know, effectively the Geth from Mass Effect, which is awesome. Now, power allocation. You can see down here our engines are not fully powered just yet. So we're going to left click and add a power token to that. You can see now that we have only two additional power left over. If we wanted to power up our rocket launcher, our Artemis, cool, it uses another power down here to a max of two more. But we don't have enough power, you can see. So we have to depower another system. You know, we can depower the med bay. We're not using that now. And then we can bring our burst laser online and it slowly charges until it's ready for use. We'll cover how weapons work here when we get into our first combat. But it is important to note that sometimes you need more power. So how do you go about doing that? You can come up here and click on your ship. In this particular case, it's called the Kestrel. And you can come down here and see, hey, how much extra does it cost to get more power? In this case, 20 scraps. So we're going to do that right off the bat. We're going to click on this and we're going to accept that. Now, suddenly we have extra power. We can power all of our weapons, all of our systems, as well as our med bay. We're good to go. And if we need to, we can strip power out of these systems to make things work. Now, keep in mind, let's say for the oxygen system, let's depower that by right clicking. Our oxygen amounts are going to slowly go down. That is a problem because for most of our crew members, they need oxygen to live. And if it goes too low, they take damage and eventually they die. So we're going to go ahead and repower that as well. But going back up here into the ship info screens, you can see that there are different ways to upgrade stuff. So for example, if you want to get additional shields, right now we only have one shield on the top left. And if that gets impacted by a laser or a missile, it goes down and has to recharge. We can get this up to four additional total shields, I should say. And that means every single investment of two bars in here. So for 20 and 30 scrap, you get a second shield barrier. For 40 and 60, again, you get three shield barriers, so on and so forth. Likewise with the engine room, the higher you increase and upgrade your engine, which means down here, if you increase it, you're going to require more and more and more power, which means you have to buy more uh, power bars from your reactor to power that. The more you get your engine increased, the better chance you have to dodge incoming fire. That's right. Right now we have a base value of about 20%. You can see up here to dodge incoming rounds. This can get very, very, very high, which is good. And it also allows you to jump out of situations faster by charging your FTL drive. Down here, the med bay, a lot of times individuals take a look at this and say, oh, I'm not going to worry about this too much. But it is important if you are going to have individuals or enemies board your ship, which will happen from time to time. If you have your healing boost a little bit higher, you can hang out in the med bay. If you're in an Engi ship where the, the healing abilities go out to the crew members, this really helps you fight off intruders because you can effectively at some point, depending on how you have this upgraded and how well your crew members are at fighting, you can effectively out heal the enemy DPS and you can win that scenario, which is good. Now, in addition to this, oxygen generation is important. It's a base level of 1x, a maximum of 6x. Sometimes you'll run across fires in areas that you'll need to vent to space to put the fire out, or you'll get damage brought back in, and you need to get in there and fix that. And if you can get that area sealed up and the oxygen filled up quickly enough, your crew members that are fixing that area won't take enough damage to die, which is important. Weapon control is also important. You can see right now for our Artemis and our burst laser, we have three power bars, and our system only allows us to use three. Let's say we wanted to get a Artemis uh, Mark II, which uses two power bars. We would need to upgrade this to allow four power bar generation and then again unlock another power bar down here or steal it from another subsystem to make it work. Lastly but not least you have your subsystems and these are also important. So for example if you don't want to leave your pilot always up there at the helm let's say you're short staffed because of taking damage or you really need to man and, and handle additional you know invaders you could put points into this for piloting which gives you an autopilot. So instead of 100% of the time always being able to give you the option to dodge, at a highest increase here, this can get up to 80%, which is pretty acceptable, which is nice. Lastly is sensors, which is really darn cool. You have one bar already unlocked, which is to see your own ship interior. 25 lets you see the enemy interior, which you can actually see the members walking around and running around. So if you have missiles that bypass shields and you want to target a specific area to deal damage to the crew, you can do so. The third upgrade at 40 allows you to see the weapon charge rate so you can better time your own attacks to help shut theirs down. And then there's even higher levels beyond that. And beyond the last item, which is very important, is the door system. This is the most often overlooked one. Normal doors, you can walk through. The enemy can walk through very, very easily. Blast doors, they can be locked. The enemy has to take time to get through them. And improved blast doors take even more time. This allows you to contain intruders and really to help kind of control them running rampant through your systems, which is awesome. 
You can come up here as well into the additional tabs. You can see your crew members. You can see what they're at with their, with their crew skills and so on and so forth. In addition, you can see what you're going to get as they slowly level up. So for example, if Crewman Block here decides to level up shields fully and fulfill that bar just by spending time using that system, you're going to get a 10% faster recharge when he's manning or she is manning the shields. That is awesome. That is really, really fantastic. And this works for all the skills in the system. Last but not least are where you actually install upgrades or pull upgrades out if you want to pull them down here into storage or you want to put them back up here onto the ship. So right now we have a rocket launcher, we've got a, a burst laser, and you've got two more spaces that you can technically fill out with weapon systems. And once we ever in decide to install a drone uh, system, we can do that as well. You can get up to three drones down here doing awesome things. Augmentations, we saw previously that the Engie Cruiser had an interest in augmentation to help the, the crew heal better rather than having to go to medbay. This particular ship, the Kestrel, does not have any of those. But we can get access to those, and we're talking about things like being able to uh, you know, take a look at extended sensor range to see where different areas are. If we don't want to go here, but we want to go there because we're going to get an easier path, path or hey, we want to find out where that store is. We're going to go further and out and find that. Uh, you get opportunity to get in here and, you know, get things like weapon systems firing faster. You also have the opportunity to do additional items like the Engi, you know, med bay augmentation. There's a huge, huge range of those systems. And as well, if you run into anything extra other than augmentations, we're talking weapon systems, drones, whatever it may be, they'll show up here in your cargo and you can choose what to do with those at that time. Now, this has been a crash course into kind of getting yourself familiarized with this ship, with the mechanisms, with the systems that are present here. And there's one last thing that we'll have to do. You can see right now time is flowing. We can press the space bar and it pauses the game. And that allows us to click on weapons, target enemy units, so on and so forth, because all of these have different load times. For example, this might take, you know, 9.6 seconds to load and then fire. This might take 10.2. And so it's always a good idea to keep an eye on where things are at. And you can always pause at any one point to give orders to different people to run around and do different things, open doors, close doors, so on and so forth. For example, if suddenly there's a lot of problems on the ship, we're going to open all the interior doors so we can run around and do what we got to do or open them again. All the exterior in the ship slowly starts to vent. But right now, nothing is actually happening because the game is paused. And we can go in here and close all the doors, unpause the games. Everything's fine. So with that being said, if you want to see kind of how this game plays, we'll run through a little bit here to see how the Kestrel rolls through this. And then in the future, we'll dive on in to a new unique playthrough, probably with one of the other races. So let's see here. Click on the jump, and it brings up the beacon map. Now, eventually, all of these systems here from left to right are going to get, you know, the Rebellion is going to slowly follow us in. It shows you where we have to go, and it shows you what we can actually do. We don't have any intel on these systems. If you get long-range sensors, you can get a bit more info. But the goal is to get to the exit and continue to keep going, so on and so forth, further and further away through this particular civilian sector onto another sector, into a region map where you can choose, I wanna go here or I wanna go here, and then it brings you through a whole new region of one of these maps yet again. So we're gonna click up here, we're gonna jump, and we're gonna see, you can see your FTL has charged on down, and hey, you detect two ships, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuer is a pirate. We can stay out of it, or we can go into their aid. Now, we don't know how powerful that pirate is. We're on a mission, and so this is something you have to ask yourself as a player. Is this worth possibly losing my ship, taking damage, and not getting anything for it? This is a question that you're going to run into time and time and time again in this game, and there's no right or wrong answer, but every decision has a consequence. Right now, we're going to stay out of it because this is a good indication of you know what we're doing trying to get through here. And it kind of gives you some narrative on kind of what happens. In this case, after a time of distress call, stop. Yeah, the pirate probably won that battle. But we're ready to go, we're ready to jump, and we're gonna move a little bit over here. This is the only place we can go, but we see that if we go here, we'll get two options opening up. So we're gonna jump to this next system and see what happens. And so right off the bat, you see, hey, another cool scenario. You see a civilian space station with heavy damage. You receive a message, hey, we've been hit hard by the war, information, and they want us to sell them drone parts and we'll get scrapped for it, which, if we had some drone parts and we have no plans to use them, this would be a good scenario. But we don't have enough, so we're going to have to ignore that station and jump again. You can see over here, the Rebellion is starting to follow after us. We're going to get a little bit closer to the exit over here. We're going to jump this way. Maybe we'll run into some enemies. Maybe we'll continue to get lucky. And right off the bat, we do have an enemy. Now, this is a pirate rigger, relationship neutral. They're not going to be outright attacking us. 
but we could always attack them if we want to. And so in this particular case, if we had some scrap, we could, you know, hire this individual to slow down the enemy advance that we have coming this way. We can choose to fight them or we're just going to say, nope, sorry, we don't need you. We're good to go. We're going to keep on moving this way. We're going to come over here to one more jump. As you can see that our, you know, our FTL fuel is continuing to go down. So here you go. Distress beacon is coming from a civilian ship. It appears it is being chased by a pirate. This time we are going to engage. We are going to fight that pirate. We're going to get in here and aid the civilian ship. Here we go. We power up our weapons and we engage the pirate ship. Now you can see because of the upgrades that we have, we know it's on the interior of this ship. It's a class as a pirate fighter, relationship hostile. It's got a pretty good amount of hull. We have a bit more, but still. And it's got one set of shields. It's got a pilot. It's got weapon systems. And it also has a teleporter down here, which is not necessarily good for us because we're going to have to potentially fight borders. At this early of the game, we might lose this fight, and that's okay. So we're going to hit that continue button, and then we're going to immediately press the space bar to pause. We are likely going to be fighting borders, and that is not good. So down here, you can manually target systems. And every time it shoots, it will stop firing until you target again. For me, at least on early and easy settings, you can get away with pressing the auto fire and using this to target specific areas of the vessel, specific areas of the ship. And we're going to use the burst laser to try to go through the shields, try to get the weapon systems and stuff taken care of. The downside is we're going to be fighting <laughs> not that great of a situation. Now we need the pilot up here and we need the engineer back there to make this work. We'll see how this goes. So... Fingers crossed. We're probably going to see borders here pop up, which is not good. So here we go. And they're going to be jumping people over. There it is. It looks like it's a mantis. That is not great. We're going to hit them immediately hit the space bar and the pause button. You can see that our weapons are already charging. And uh, I'm going to try to run our pilot out of the way because they probably just want to get into this room and wreck it. That's all right. We're going to go over here to the shield room. And there it is. They're trying to wreck that stuff. We're just going to keep launching our weapons. Trying to keep our shields up. We're not going to get a good chance of evading. You can see an impact is coming in. Boom, right off the bat. Bad things are happening. Not great, not great. Now that did just get blown up. We're going to come in here and try to repair this. We'll see what happens. We are blind right off the bat. Now we can pause again and see that they're at risk right now of getting completely wrecked. And we will hopefully win this fight, but our whole crew can still die. Now the downside of this room being wrecked is we don't know if anything's on fire we don't know if we need to vent the areas or anything which is very 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 dangerous so right now the pirate vessel did win but while we have won that fight you can see we got one missile even though we spent two we got one extra drone part and 21 scrap pretty darn cool contacting the civilian ship and hey they're very grateful this time around and we got some extra jump fuel missiles and more scrap awesome stuff the downside is we still have intruders here so while we don't have to worry about anyone blowing up our ship anymore, we do need to worry about uh, making sure that the intruders are taken care of because they're still in the area here wrecking stuff. And we're going to come up here, and they're going to be in here, which is awesome. You can see that we are healing actively while we fight, and it's a two against one. Even with the Mantis being superior in close combat, this is a good tactic of mine that I like to use at least early on to make this work. And there we go. We have one. We're going to come up here and press this area to return our crew members to their designated areas. The pilot's going to come up here, and they're going to go in and repair this section. We got some scrap. We took a little bit of damage from the fight. And once we get this repaired, we will be able to jump, and we will hopefully get to the next area to show you more of how the map works, which is really, really cool. So we could go to a distress signal, get more information, and this is the decision you have to make. Do we continue to try to jump around and make missions to get more scrap, to get more upgrades, and to try to get more and more prepared for the end fight? Uh, kind of a hint. Usually you want to do that, but there's a little bit of resource management. You could come up short on jump fuel and be hosered waiting for someone to hopefully stop on by and help you. That's not an enemy. But right now we're going to jump to the exit, and we're going to see from here how this goes. So you can see, hey, we're here. We're getting ready to jump, but there is stuff in this area. And hey, someone is looking to buy fuel for scrap so we give them scrap we get fuel right now we don't need any we're going to hang on to this we're going to ignore the station and we're going to come up here and press this jump and so that gives us the option to go to the next sector and now you're on your sector map way over here this is where we need to get once we get to this point that is the final series of maps that is the final you know region that we can work through and finally take on that big bad boss as it were but right now we have choices we can go to rock controlled space where we can potentially get a rock crew member. They're very hostile. They like to fight everybody. Or we can go to Zoltan controlled areas. This specifically 
is where those glowing individuals are that get extra energy. We're going to go there. That's going to be beneficial if we're lucky enough to get a chance to get in there and uh, get some more individuals. Now, unfortunately, because we don't really know what's around us, it's going to be an adventure. And of course, down here is a look of what you can see for a nebula. These are those areas where if you jump through these spaces, the pursuing fleet is going to slow down, but you take a lot more uh, risk to see what happens. Now we're going to leave that there for now. That's going to kind of be where we leave off for this introduction. There is so much more to this game. Always, everywhere you go, there's always something interesting occurring and going on and something to work through. We're going to get our uh, weapons individual over there to repair these doors so we can open them. Right now we can't. And uh, with that, if you're interested in seeing more content like this, if you'd like to see a specific playthrough, either with a stealth ship, Engie, uh, Zoltan, whatever it may be, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, let me know with a like on this video, and I'll see what I can do to get some of that stuff in the pipeline to make it work. This is a game I've really enjoyed. I've been playing in my leisure time, and I'd like to do a bit more of a formal playthrough if there's interest for it. So thank you very much for uh, stopping on by. Thank you very much for checking out this game and this preview. I really, really enjoyed it, and it's always been a blast having your wonderful, amazing individuals out there come in and check out these videos, and hopefully they make your day a little bit better. So as always, thank you much for stopping on by, and we will see you next time. Have a good one.